Welcome to the fourth C programming tutorial. In this lesson, we'll learn about conditional statements using if, else, if, and else. Conditional statements allow a program to make decisions based on the data it receives. Let's start with the if statement. It lets you run a block of code only if a certain condition is true. Here's the basic syntax of an if statement. The conditions goes inside the parentheses. The condition is true when the value is a non-zero, which can be one, two, or so on. However, if it's zero, like this, then this code block won't be executed at all. Let's demonstrate this by printing something out to the terminal. Type in print f string this if statement is executed, period, in a new line, semicolon. So let's run and see what happens. But remember, if the condition is zero, then this block of code right here will be skipped. So let's build and run. So nothing comes up as expected. However, when this is one, then this print statement will be executed. So this works right here. So this is the very basic of the if statement. Sometimes you want to run a different block of code if this condition is false. For this, we use the else statement, and this is the following syntax. Else, curly brace, and then the closing curly brace, and this is the separate code block. In this code block, let's print out else statement is executed. So let's type that in. Semicolon. The way that we have this code set up is line number six will always be executed instead of line eight. However, when I change this to zero, then line eight will always be executed. Let's demonstrate that. Else statement is executed. You can make conditions more useful by comparing values. C has several comparison operators which return one for true or zero for false. So let's create a variable. Let's use the regular int data. And let's say this is zero. So what I want to do is I want to check this variable and compare it to a different value. To do that, all we have to do is type in data. And the first one I want to share is the equal to operator. We're checking if this data is the same as this number right here. If this is true, then this operator will return a one and line eight will get executed. What happens if we change zero to one on line five? This makes this conditional statement not true anymore, and this will return zero. Therefore, the else block will get run instead. I'm going to change this back to zero to go over the next operator. The next operator I want to share is the not equal to operator. To change it to the not equal to operator, replace the first equal sign with exclamation point. This is telling the computer that we want to check if data is not equals to zero. If it's not equal to zero, then run line eight. If this statement is false, which it is, then this operator will return zero. Therefore, the else block will get run instead. So let's demonstrate that the else statement is executed. If I change this to one, then line eight will get printed out. Let's demonstrate that too. As expected, let's change this back to zero. The next operator that I want to cover is the greater than operator. So this right here is the greater than operator. And this is still false because the data is still zero and we only want to run this block if data is greater than zero. That means that line 10 will get executed instead. Let's demonstrate that as well. As expected, if I change this back to one, then line eight will get executed. This if statement is executed. Now let's change this back to zero. So the next operator is the less than operator. 
which is this. And this condition is still not true because data is equal to zero and we're checking if data is less than zero. Therefore, line 10 will get executed instead. Let's demonstrate that as well. As expected. And let's, let's make this as a negative one. Line eight will get executed instead. All right, so let's get this back to zero. So the next operator I want to cover is the greater than or equal to sign. So this is the operator for that. This is true because data is equal to zero. So this line eight will get executed. Also, if I change this to one, then this condition is true because data is greater than zero. So let's run this to see what happens. As expected. The last comparison operator I want to share is less than or equal to. This is false because data is equal to one, but we're checking if data is less than or equal to zero. So line 10 will get executed instead. However, if I change this back to zero, then this conditional statement is also true because data is equal to zero. Negative one is also true for this conditional statement because data is less than zero. Let's run and see what happens. As expected, you can combine multiple conditions using logical operators. So let's set data back to zero for this example. So for this example, let's say that we want to check if this number is in range of something. And let's say that the range is from zero to nine. To do this, we simply use data greater than or equal to zero. We want to start from zero and we want to limit to nine as the maximum. To do the maximum, we simply say the double and signs and data less than or equal to nine. So this and operator here means that these two condition must be true in order to return one for this condition. So for example, this part of the conditional statement is true because data is equal to zero. And this is also true because zero is less than nine. Therefore, line eight will get executed. Let's demonstrate that as expected. By the way, to make this code more readable, it's always a good idea to add parentheses around the two comparison operators. It's always good to be explicit with how you want this code to run. Like for example, we want to check for data and th if this is false, then everything will return zero. And if this is true, then we'll keep going to the next operator here and we'll check if this condition is true. If it is true, then the final operation will be taking place by this double ampersand sign. If both conditions are true, then the total result will be one. The parentheses makes it easier to read in my opinion, but it's not necessary. Another logical operator we can use is the OR to pipe signs right here. What this means is one of these conditional statements must be true in order to return one. If this conditional statement is false, but this is true, then the total result will return a one. In this case, these two conditional statements are true. So it would execute line eight. So if I change this uh, second condition to negative nine, this will be false because zero is not equals to negative nine. But since this is the or operator and this is true, then line eight will still be executed as expected. Another logical operator that we can use is called the not operator. And we use the not operator by typing in the exclamation mark here, like in the front of the conditional statement. So we know that this conditional statement will return one because data is equal to zero. So this becomes one right here. However, this exclamation point will negate that one. That means that the one becomes zero. In general, if we not zero, then that's equal to one. But if we not one, then that becomes zero. This entire conditional statement becomes false. Therefore, line 11 will be executed. Let's demonstrate that. Sometimes you want to check multiple conditions. You can use the else if statement to do this. It's like adding extra checks after an if statement. 
Let's say you want to check if a number falls within two different ranges. Let's go back to the original range for the first condition with the AND operator. Now let's check for if this number is on a different range. To include the else if statement, it has to be between if and else. So where I have my cursor is the correct spot to include the else if statement. So let's type that in. Else if. And let's copy and paste to save some time. And then the minimum range for this, we can say 10 and 19 for the maximum range. If this conditional statement is true, then it will print out a string. And let's modify this to be else if statement instead of if statement. So let's clean this up a bit. So since data is currently set to zero, then that means that this conditional statement right here, this entirety for if will become true. But let's change this zero to 10. So the else if statement becomes true. This else if statement is true because data is equal to 10 and it's less than 19. Therefore, line 10 will be executed instead. Let's try this. This else if statement is executed. Just so you know, we don't really need this else statement. This can work too. However, when data is out of range for both conditional statements, then nothing happens in this program. That's why it can be good to include the else statement here. When to use if versus else if. You want to use the multiple if statements if you want to check conditions independently of each other. For example, if I change this to if, that means that data will be checked in this conditional statement and the conditional statement will be checked too on line 11. If we don't want this, then we want to use the else if statement when you want to check a new condition only if the previous if was false. For example, this is this is what we had before. If this is false, then it will check this one. However, if this is true, then the else if and else won't get executed at all. Let's clean this up for the next example. And see, you can use the bool data type for true false values, which is defined in the std bool.h library. Let's include that library now. Include angle bracket std bool.h. To use that kind of data type, we use bool and let's name this variable status. We can set the status to either true or false. False can be equivalent to zero, while true can be equivalent to one. We can use this type of variable in our conditional statement. We can simply say status, curly braces, and let's print something out here. Print f status is true. New line, semicolon else statement status is false since status is true then this line 9 will be executed let's demonstrate that build run status is true if we change this to false then line 11 will be executed clear build run Status is false. That's the basics of conditional statements in C. You now know how to use if, else if, and else to make decisions in your programs. Keep practicing to get more comfortable with conditions. Thanks for following along and happy coding.